真我真。A very good morning and praise the Lord. It's such a beautiful day that the Lord has made that we may be glad and rejoice in it. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning and I trust that the Lord has kept you well. We bless the Lord that he's been good to us. He's been so, so faithful to us. And we are so grateful. We are already past half the month of November and we are grateful to the Lord. Allow me to welcome you to our online morning glory this morning. You're such a blessing and we do not take it for granted that you always tune in. Allow me to commit our time to the Lord that the time we will be here as we make our prayers, as we give thanks this morning, it will be acceptable to him. And because we are more than two and we are more than three, we know and we believe that he's in the midst of us. Our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are so grateful this beautiful morning. This is the day you've made that we may be glad and rejoice in it. We are grateful because you have done us well. We are grateful because we know that you've been our God, O oh God. Father, we thank you because you've loved us even before we loved you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you've taken good care of each one of us. We do not take that for granted. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for the gift of good health and above all, the gift of salvation. Thank you, dear Lord, that you've given us a sound mind that we can reason, we can make judgment, we can make decisions. We give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you, faithful Father, that you have loved us so much unconditionally. And for that, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you also that you gather us every other morning from 5 to 6 a.m. We do not take that for granted even for a moment that we gather in your presence to pray, to give thanks, to make our supplications known to you. That one we do not take it for granted even for a moment. To know that we have a date with you every other morning, Lord, we thank you. Thank you because you do not fail even as we fail. You do not become weary even as we become weary. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. And this morning we commit our time together to you. And we pray, mighty Father, that your Holy Spirit, who is our intercessor, who intercedes for us in groanings that words cannot express, will intercede for us this morning. We thank you and we bless you, Spirit of the living God. Take preeminence as we make our prayers. We thank you, dear Lord, because you are not limited by distance. That wherever each one of us is tuning in from, I thank you because you are together with us. Wherever we are tuning from, Lord, as we join our faith together, you will hear us this morning. We thank you and we bless your name. Receive our adoration this morning because no one compares to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen and amen. We thank God that he's been so good to us. And welcome, Sana, if you're tuning in for the very first time. Karibu Sana, if you are our regular attendee, thank you so much for always tuning in. We don't take it for granted that every morning we gather here and we join our faith together. And the Lord commands a blessing every time we do that. This morning, I want us to go before the Lord and just be grateful to him. Just give thanks to him. Maybe we are looking at where the year is, where the month is, and we feel as if really we do not have a reason to give thanks. But Psalm 68 verses 19, the Bible says, Psalm 68 verses 19, and I'm reading from, I'll read from maybe two or three versions. The New King James Version says, The blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. And there is something, there's a, a term there that says seller, to mean pause in the presence of the Lord and think about that. Think about this Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation, that we may not have everything that we ever needed, but daily, 
He is faithful to load us with benefits and He is also the God of our salvation. The New Living Translation says, Praise be the Lord. Praise the Lord, sorry, praise the Lord. Praise God our Savior. For each day He carries us in His arms. Now, I don't know how many of us feel you know feel this privilege of being carried in the arms of the lord it's such an honor it's such a privilege and you feel like a baby in the arms of the lord that each day he carries us in his arms he does not only uphold us with his righteous right hand but he carries us in his arms and then the amplified says blessed be the lord who bears our burden day by day, the God who is our salvation. I love that. That blessed be the Lord who bears our burden day by day. Whatever burden you could be having, even right now as we talk about praising and blessing the Lord, and maybe you're there thinking, what is there to thank the Lord for? What is there to bless the Lord for? You could be in a state where you have disengaged and you're feeling mm -mm, this year better come to an end so that we get to January and make other resolutions and hear another word of the year. But you know what? He bears our burden day by day. Now our burdens are those things that we feel so heavy for us to bear. But he's the one who bears our burdens day by day. And he's God our salvation now he does not he is not only the god of our salvation he is the god our salvation he alone is our salvation he alone is our refuge he alone is our safety so i want us to go before the lord and just give thanks for that that the lord our god is the one who daily loads us with benefits he carries us in his arms every day and he bears our burdens day by day. And I do not know what burden you could be having, but I want you to go before the Lord and offer a sacrifice of praise, offer a, offer a sacrifice of thanks as you tell him, thank you, Lord, that you daily load me with benefits, that even where I am, I may not have everything that I wanted, but one thing is for sure. You have loaded me with benefits every other day. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you're the Lord, our salvation. We thank you that you're the lifter of our faces. You're the lifter of our heads. You're the lifter of our feet. You are our glory. You are our shield. You are our refuge. You are our safety, dear Lord. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, because you are Alpha and Omega and you are also everything in between. That you are the beginning and you are the end. And you know the very end from the beginning. Lord, we thank you. Father, we give you praise this morning that you've loved us with such an everlasting love that you carry us in your arms every other day that even in the days that we are not even sure whether we want to move forward or even just sit down you daily carry us in your arms father we thank you that you're the lord that daily loads us with benefits the benefits that we can say the benefits that we may not even count because we do not think they are benefits you load us with them. Lord, we are grateful. Father, we thank you because you're the Lord that bears our burdens day by day. You bear our burdens. We thank you and we magnify your name. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful because you're the Lord that has upheld us with your righteous right hand. There were days that we are quite tough. There were nights that were quite thick. We were not even sure whether we would see the morning. But Lord, even though weeping endured for a night, joy came in the morning. And even this morning, we are grateful that with the coming of this morning, 
joy has come to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we honor you because you're such a loving Savior. There is no shadow of turning with you. Every good and perfect gift comes from you, the Father of all lights. You have no shadow of turning with you. Lord, we thank you. Father, we are grateful because you are not a man that you should lie. You are not a son of man that you should change your mind. Once you have spoken, Lord, you do what you have promised. Lord, we thank you. And I thank you particularly because of my viewers and my listeners. Father, I thank you because you have gathered us here this morning, not to see each other, not to listen from each other, but to gather in your presence. And Lord, I thank you because of them that sacrifice, them that seek you diligently. Father, I pray that you may reward them this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, that even as we spend our time in your presence, our time in your presence is not wasted. Our time in your presence will not, uh, will not be in vain. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Receive all the adoration and all the honor. Take preeminence, we pray, dear Lord. We thank you and we magnify your name. Words from the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter number 6. 2 Kings chapter number 6. I want us to begin verses 32 and 33. Then we jump to chapter number 7. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, Elisha was sitting in his house with the elders of Israel when the king sent a messenger to summon him. But before the messenger arrived, Elisha said to the elders, A murderer has sent a man to, to cut off my head. When he arrives, shut the door and keep him out. We will soon hear his master's steps following him. Verse 33, While Elisha was still saying this, the messenger arrived. And the king said, All this misery is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? And chapter number 7 verse 1 says, Elisha replied, Listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says, By this time tomorrow in the markets of Samaria, Six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. The officer assisting the king said to the man of God, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. But Elisha replied, you will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to eat any of it. Now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates. Why should we sit here waiting to die? They asked each other. We will starve if we stay here. But with the famine in the city, we will starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Aramean army if they let us live. So much the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. So at twilight, they set, they set out for the camp of the Arameans. But when they came, to the edge of the camp no one was there for the Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and the galloping of horses and the sounds of great army approaching the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us 
they cried to one another. So they panicked and ran into the night, abandoning their tents, horses, donkeys, and everything else. So they fled for their lives. When the men with leprosy arrived at the edge of the camp, they went into one tent after another, eating and drinking wine. And they carried off silver and gold and clothing and hid it. Finally, they said to each other, This is not right. This is a day of good news and we aren't sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some calamity will certainly fall upon us. Come on, let's go back and tell the people at the palace. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And I believe that you will get some opportunity to just go through the whole account of what is happening here. Now, I began from chapter number 6 from verses 32 to 33 to hear why in chapter number 7, Elisha was replying. Whom was he reply, replying to? And why would he say that, listen to this message from the Lord? Now, this is the account of the famine that was in Samaria. And it begins in chapter number 6. And the thing that got the king of Samaria or the king of Israel of God is when he was passing by a wall and one woman approached him and told him, King, we have a problem here. Now this woman told me to give up my son so that we could eat my son today. Then tomorrow we would eat hers. And that is what we did. Then when it was her turn to give up the son, she hid the son. Now the king was so distressed, so frustrated until he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth. And he decided this misery is coming from the Lord and I'm going to Elisha. Elisha is the only man of God that I know around. And because now if you read the, the whole of chapter 6, you realize that there was an opportunity that the king of Samaria had to deal with the army of the Arameans. But the man of God, Elisha, told the king of Samaria not to kill them, to just give them, make a feast for them, and then allow them to go. Then later on, even after the man of God has told them not to avenge, had, had told the king of Israel not to avenge, uh, to, avenge uh, to avenge himself against the king of Aramea, they still besieged the city of Samaria so that no one was going out or even coming in. And that is how there was a famine because nothing was going out or coming in. There was no food that was going out or coming in. There was no one that was going out or coming in. Now there was such a famine, such that people were eating their children, people were feeding on even dove dung. It was that bad. Now at this point where we are at, at verses 32 and verses 33, the king has sent his messenger to go and behead Elisha, the man of God. And Elisha, being the man of God, has foreknowledge and he knows that there is a messenger that has been sent to come and behead him. And so he tells the elders of the city, you need to sit there and shut the door. When the messenger comes, before he gets here, you need to shut the door. And when the messenger is coming, the king is also behind him. And he's saying that this misery is from the Lord and I cannot wait any longer. Then Elisha, being the man of God, replies and says, listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says, by this time tomorrow. In the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver. And 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. Now I'm sure that by the time we are getting here, you're thinking this must be a joke. Or there must be something that this man of God knows 
to make such a declaration. And if you read the whole account in chapter number 7, you realize that whatever the man of God said came to pass. Now the officer that was assisting the king told the man of God that this cannot happen. We've been through this famine and whatever you're saying, that flour will be retailing for such a little amount of money and grain too, that cannot be. Why? Because he doubted. And the man of God told him, you wait, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. And we know that that is what happened. Now the Bible says when you go to verses number three, that there were four lepers who were at the entrance of the city gates. And a time came and they decided, if we sit here, and they asked one another, why should we sit here and die? Now, remember the man of God said that at this time, tomorrow, flour and grain will be retailing at this amount of money. And I love the fact that when the man of God spoke, then God ordered things and things started moving. And here are four lepers. We do not know for how long they had been at the city gates. But they are saying, why should we sit here and die? Why should we continue sitting here and die? We know very well that if we go to Samaria, there's a famine and we are going to die. If we sit where we've been used to, we will still die. But if we go and surrender ourselves to the city and to the army of Arameans, there are two options. They will either spare us or they will kill us. If, if, this, uh, they, uh, if they allow us to live, the better. If they kill us, we will have died. So, I mean, there is no loss. We have nothing to lose. And I love the faith that they had. Now they decided that they are going. And the Bible says that by the time they were getting to the edge of the camp, the army of the Syrians had voices. They had as if there were galloping horses. Now the Lord amplified the steps of these four lepers. And they had as if there were, there were hired armies that were coming against them and they left their city. They left Aramia and they ran away. They didn't even have time to pack. They ran away. And you know the Bible says that the account of what the man of God had said came to pass. We know that they went and gave back a report and they said, you come, this is the day of good news. And there is something that we need to take from this. There is plunder that we need to get from this. And we know the account that the king of Samaria was not even sure. He sent a few people to go and take the horses that had been left and said, let's sacrifice some men. If they die, then they will be like the ones that died. If they, uh, if they, they do not die and they survive, then the better for us, we will have gotten something. Now the Bible says that when it was time for them to go and get the plunder, they really got a good one. They really got a good one and the words of the man of God came to pass. That flour and even the grains were retailing at the price that the man of God had said. And because of the because of the way the people were running over, the man that was assisting the king was run over. And it came to pass that he had, he saw it being sold, but he could not partake of it. Now, what am I saying this morning? I know that so many of us are in a situation where we would rather disengage because anyway, we don't know. We are at a point where we are feeling we've had the whole year but we do not know. We are at a point that we would rather disengage than move on. We would rather stay in the comfort zones. But I love the man of God who said and he spoke. And when he spoke, the Lord started ordering things. There was a ripple effect. The, Lord, the man of God spoke, then the Lord started ordering the steps. There was a ripple effect. Now these 
four lepers we've, we've not been told how long they had been at the seat at the city gates but one time after the man of god had spoken they decided why sit we here and die let's do something let's make a choice and i'm here to speak to someone who needs to speak to their situation and speak life and tell that is that situation that says the lord this is what the lord is saying this morning your situation because you have ears this is what the lord is, is saying this morning and even as you speak to your situation there are choices that we have to make and as we make these choices we must know that choices have consequences. And the beauty of it is that as the four lepers were making choices, they knew that the choice we are making, it's either a do or a die kind of, a, a kind of consequences. As we make the choice we are making, we are either going to live or we are going to die. And in life, we need a people like Mordecai. We need to surround ourselves with a people like Mordecai. People who will tell us that if you stick in the comfort zone, my friend, you will die. But if you decide to go, you will either die or survive. Remember what Mordecai told Esther, that you could be you're in such a situation for such a time as this. And I tell you and I dare to tell you that you could be in that situation. People are looking up to you. Your family is looking up to you. And even if not so much for the family, but your destiny is upon you and you're sa in, in that situation for such a time as this and i want to tell you that the moment you start moving the lord will order your steps because the lord orders the steps of the righteous and as we move forward the lord will amplify our steps the lord will see to it that as we move forward he will ensure that our steps are amplified. I want us to go before the Lord in prayer. Psalms chapter number 62 verses 11. And I want us to read from the Passion Translation that says, God said to me once and for all, all the strength and power you need flows from me. All the strength and power you need flows from me. And again, I heard it clearly said, all the love you need is found in me. And it's true that you repay people for what they do. I want to read the same from the Amplified that says, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belong loving kindness and compassion, for you compensate every man according to the value of his work and i want us to go before the lord and make a prayer this morning proclaim i want us to proclaim to our situations because the bible has said that all the strength and the power that we need flows from the lord once the lord has spoken twice we have heard that power belongs to our God. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Thank you for reminding us that the power and the strength and the love that we need flows from you. That you have spoken once and we have heard twice that power belongs to you, O oh God. And I thank you this morning, even as we speak to our situations, and we speak life to our situation that could be looking dead. We speak life to our situations that could be looking hopeless. Father, we speak life to our situations. I thank you, Lord, because you have made us and created us in the image and likeness of you. That you have made us for multiplication. You have made us for fruitfulness. You have made us for increase. And this morning, dear Lord, no matter how our situation looks, Father, we speak life to our situations. We thank you and we magnify your name. I want us to go before the Lord and make a prayer and ask the Lord to help us to be willing to be led of him. That we will even be willing to be courageous enough 
to take this journey. We will be courageous enough to say that I will not sit here and die. At your leading, Lord, I will go. Nevertheless, at your word, I will go. I do not know what this journey entails, but you who sees the end from the beginning, I will follow you. So I want us to ask the Lord that help me that as I step out of the comfort zone, help me, dear Lord. I do not know what this journey entails, but I am willing. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you're the Lord that upholds us with your righteous right hand. You're the Lord that carries us on your ego's wings. And this morning, dear Lord, our prayer is that you may help us to trust in you. That you may help us to look up to you because you are our help, O oh God. Father, we thank you this morning because our help does not come from the east or from the west. Our help is not even on the mountains. Our help is in the Lord, the creator of heaven and the earth. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we glorify you. Thank you, Lord, because those who look up to you, their faces will be radiant and shame will not befall us. This morning, I thank you because as we take a step, as we make choices to leave our comfort zone, Father, you are ordering things, you are ordering people, you are ordering men on our behalf, O oh God. You are ordering resources for us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you because you're leading us to where we have never been before. There are possibilities of us fearing because we are human. But we will look up to you who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Help us, Lord, to be yielded to you, not to be stubborn as you lead us. Thank you because you have promise to guide us and to instruct us and therefore i pray dear lord that you're going to help us to be so yielded to you dear lord that when you tell us to move forward we will move forward when you tell us to move to the right we will move to the right father i thank you may you help us to even pay close attention to what you're saying that we will hear a voice saying that this is the way walk in it. And I pray, mighty Father, help us to hearken to your voice. Help us to hearken to your still, small voice. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you, Lord, because you always watch over us and you want the very best for us, Lord. And I pray for someone that could be stuck in a dilemma. They do not know whether to move to the right or to the left. But Lord, I pray that as they walk with you, Lord, may you give them a direction in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, help us to be willing and obedient. Because as we willingly obey, you will cause us to eat the best of the land. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. I pray for someone this morning that could be in between a rock and a hard place. They are almost giving up this morning. But I pray to you, Lord, that, Father, you will uphold them with your righteous right hand. I pray for them this morning that because you promised to carry us in your arms day by day, would you carry these dear ones in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those that are hopeless, for those that are feeling helpless, I pray that you may be a reminder to them that you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Lord, I pray for this couple that is going through a hard time and they are not even seeing eye to eye. How I pray that you may reconcile them back to one another in the name of Jesus. I pray for this one that could be moving from high waters to the fire. I pray that they will not be overwhelmed. That you who has promised to be with us, you will be with us till the very end of time. Lord, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and we give you honor. Receive all the adoration and all the honor this morning. 
I want us to go before the Lord and pray concerning our children that are sitting their exams. That all the candidates who are sitting their exams, including the grade six, that we will pray for them, that the Lord will be with them. The Lord will order their minds. They will have the mind of Christ. They will remember whatever they've been taught. And even the Lord will be with them as they transit from one stage to another. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because of our children that are sitting their exams. Father, I pray that you may grant them the mind of Christ. They've been in class, they've learned. And as they almost near their exams, we come against the anxiety, we come against the fear of failure, we come against the fear of unknown. Father, we pray that you would grant them concentration, understanding, and even remembrance that comes from above. Would you bless them with a good memory? I pray that the Holy Spirit, who is our all-time teacher, will teach them and even remind them what they've been taught. Father, we pray for the class 8. We pray for the grade, eight, grade uh, 6, Lord. We pray for the form 4s. That as they sit for their exams, Lord, you know their future. You know what is ahead of them. Father, we pray particularly for the grade six that are transiting to the junior high school. Lord, you know them better than we do. And now I pray for them, Lord, that Father, you're going to guide them. As they transit, I pray for a smooth transition that there will not be any hiccups. And if there be, dear Lord, you're going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, we pray even for their parents. We pray that they will support them. We pray that you would be their guide even now, dear Lord. Some of them could be in a panic mode because they do not know what next for their children. But I pray this morning, would you guide them? Would you order their steps and direct their paths? Provide the finances that are needed, dear Lord. Provide the resources. Provide everything that is needed, dear Lord. And I pray that you would command your angels concerning these young ones. Command your angels concerning these parents. Father, I pray, may you place men and women wherever at the points that they need help in the name of Jesus. Father, would you guide them? Would you direct their paths and order their steps? Father, as the class 8 transit to form 1, Lord, I pray, would you guide them? You know the desires of their hearts. You know the desires of their parents' hearts, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, would you fulfill the desires of their hearts? And would you grant them that which you know is to their advantage and to your glory, dear Lord? Father, be with them. I pray for the form force, dear Lord. As some transit to colleges, to campuses, and to any other places they will transit to, I pray that you would be with them. May you be their guide, I pray. We thank you this morning because of even their teachers. We pray that you would lead them, that they would support our children even as they are almost doing their exams. Would you guide them and be with them? Father, we thank you for all our children as they sit their exams, Lord. As they are almost coming to the end of their term, dear Lord, would you be with them? Grant them concentration, understanding, and even remembrance that comes from above. Would you bless them and bless them indeed? I give you praise and I give you honor. You reign, Heavenly Father, you reign, and there is none like you. Receive all the adoration this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father. I want us to go before the Lord and make a prayer concerning our nation. One of the things we found out in the story of, the, of Samaria in 2 Kings chapter 6 and 7 is that the Lord turned around their economy. The Lord healed their land. And I want us to go before the Lord and pray that the Lord will heal our land. We know the state of our nation, the famine that is there, the scarcity of resources. 
the unemployment that is in our nation and in so many other nations. And as we go before the Lord, we are praying, Lord, turn around our situation. Turn around our situation, we pray. Our Father and our God, we pray this morning concerning our nation and our nations. Father, we thank you because you planted us in our various nations at such a time as this for a reason. And we pray concerning our nations, concerning our cities, our counties, our states, our districts. We pray, mighty Father, that Lord, you would heal our economy. You would heal the state of our trade, the state of our affairs. Heal and turn around our situations in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as you did it for Samaria, we know that you're well able to turn around our situation. That you're able to give us beauty for ashes. That Lord, you're able to give us an abundance where there has been scarcity. You are able to open up our economy such that those that are unemployed will be absorbed into the job market. You're able to give us ideas that we will also become employers, faithful God. Lord, I thank you and I bless your name. Receive all the adoration, receive all the honor. We bless you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ as we work hard. May there be profit for our labor, dear Lord. May we not toil in, in vain, O oh God. May we not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. Father, bless the work of our hands. I pray for our leaders in the name of Jesus. That Lord, as they implement our policies as a nation, Father, they are going to be selfless. They are going not only to focus on what is benefiting them and their people, but they will look at what is benefiting every citizen in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you are causing us to rise, Lord. And as we rise, Father, nations will come to our rising. As we rise as a nation and as a people, Lord, kings will come to the brightness of our rising. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. I thank you for the opportunity you gave us to be in your presence. Thank you because of my viewers and my listeners. Father, I speak your blessing upon them, the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. I pray for that blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go to our various places, I pray that you bless the work of our hands. Be with us, mighty Father, on our steps and direct our paths. I declare that the arrows of the enemy will not come near us or our loved ones. Perfect everything concerning us, dear Lord. And I pray for every giver this morning that, Lord, you're going to bless them. Bless them indeed. May they never lack anything good in their lives. Would you bless them indeed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We honor you because we know that you have heard us. We thank you because we know that mountains are melting like wax in your presence. We thank you because we know that we will return with thanksgiving. We thank you and we praise your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for keeping us company. And thank you for joining me together as we joined our faith. And I know that the Lord has begun to do something as we spoke to our situations, as we are making those choices that we are making, the Lord is ordering our steps and he's ordering resources on our behalf. There will be a ripple effect as we do everything we are doing. I want to give us this opportunity to give unto the Lord. And we have two ways of doing that. We have a Lipa 9 Pesa, our pay bill number is 8420. Five zero, And in case you want to do a direct bank transfer, the details are provided on the screen. And I know that the Lord will bless you and the Lord has been blessing you and he will continue to bless you and cause you to walk in abundance. I want to invite us to our 
evening service, our weekday service happening this evening at 5.30. We are continuing with the study from the book of Romans and we are now on Romans chapter number 7. Romans chapter number 7 is where we are beginning this evening and you don't want to miss that. In case you've missed, please go and uh, look for our turning point services and get to listen. But for this evening, I'm inviting you, please make an effort of coming in case you're in Mombasa and its environs. In case you're not able to come in person, you can tune in online here on YouTube at Praise Chapel Kenya and on Facebook at Praise Chapel Kenya. You're such a blessing. The Lord bless you so much. Welcome on Sunday to fellowship with us. Our services are at 7.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. You're such a blessing and may the Lord bless you indeed. And we are located at General Madenge Road next to Mamangena Girls opposite Aga Khan Hospital. Please come and fellowship with us. We will be honored by your presence. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom, shalom.